This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I've adapted a single bed edging so that you can use it around a v-neck. What I did was I worked from the point outward in two different directions so that the edging is mirror images and you can go ahead and join one shoulder to the back and keep on going around the back then put a join in your edging on one of the shoulder seams. So let's get started with this simple edging. I'm going to work from the center toward my left with the wrong side of the knitting facing me. I have two stitches in the middle of the sample that are on a piece of waste yarn and I'm going to put one of those on the right of two needles, just two, on the machine. Now if you're doing a long edging you need to start over on the right and work your way on across. You'll want to start farther over because you'll need more needles. This edging creeps across the needle bed as you work it. And this is going to be my second needle. The edging is worked at least one to two tension dial numbers tighter than the garment. and I'm putting my needles out into hold to make it easier for them to knit off and knitting six rows. Now the next step is to pick up two more spots along this side and you can flip this over and make sure you're getting the stitches that you want to get you can actually see it pretty easily. So I'm putting two more places onto needles and I'm knitting six rows. I'm keeping an eye on the stitches making sure that they knit through. Now I'm going to pick up two more and put them on the next two needles. This is the part you repeat. You pick up two more spots and then you move the rightmost two stitches and put them on the next two needles. Make sure that you take those needles completely back out of work so you only have four needles in work and knit six rows. Now you're going to repeat that procedure. Pick up the next two spots. Actually, you want to pick up these two and put them on two more needles. And <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is get almost every row as I work down this edge. Now I'm going to take these two stitches and move them over to these two needles and I'm going to knit six rows. And repeat two more needles on the left get rid of the two needles on the right and knit six rows and two more needles on the left move these two stitches, those two needles out of work and knit six rows Now 
Now when you get to the end of the strip, you're going to do things a little bit differently. You pick up two stitches like always, and you move these two stitches like always, but to keep from having a long strip here, you would just knit two rows and then do a loose row so that you can take that off with the loop through the loop bind off. And I'll finish that by taking this last loose end through the loop and drawing that up. Now flipping this over, see what a great looking little edge that made? It looks almost like little cables or maybe little crocheted blackberries. Now what we're going to do is start on this side knitting from here over. So we're going to go from left to right starting with the carriage on the left and we'll use these two needles. We're going to start exactly the same way we started the last piece except for the direction. So I'm picking up that loop from the waist yarn, that one left over loop that isn't on anything but waist yarn. It's open. And then I'm going to take the first stitch along the edge and thread up. I have to readjust my tension back down to that tight tension. and knit my six rows. Now this next one, I'm going to get the next two stitches and put them on the needles to the right before I was adding needles to the left and knit six rows Now here's the part you'll repeat. That was just the get started part, but this is the part you do over and over on down the edge. Add two on the right, take the two stitches off the leftmost needles, and add them to the next two needles. The double decrease. And knit six rows. I just keep having to check to make sure they knitted through. and do it again. Two stitches on the right. Get rid of these two on the left. And knit six rows. Add two more on the right. two more.
here I am at the tail end of the job again. So I set my needles up, as always. But this time, I'm only going to knit two rows, do a loose row, cut my yarn, and do the loop through a loop bind off, just going in the other direction. You always start in the direction that doesn't have the end so that you can finish by pulling the end through the last loop. Here's our little edge. You need to pull that red yarn out of the middle. Now to finish this, you do a mattress stitch from about here to here in the very center. The mattress stitch can be done with one of the ends from where you started the yarn. I'll start by bringing the yarn through that very first edge just above the last stitch. And then I'll go to the other side and come through the same spot on the other side. And then I'll just go in where I came out and catch one loop. Go over here, in where I came out and catch one loop. I am a half stitch from the edge, that is only one thread from the edge. And I'll draw that up, inspect, make sure I'm happy with it so far, and keep on. Now I'll finish getting this mattress stitch in and then show you how this turned out. I stitched all the way up to where this first bump ends. Then I'll flip it over and just hide my yarn ends on the back. running them in and out of that narrow little seam. Here's the finished neck edge. Now if you were making a real sweater you would typically seam one of the shoulders and on that side you would just keep going with the edging all the way over. Then you would have a seam in the other shoulder to put in at the end along with the seam in the edging. So try this simple single bed edge on a v-neck sometimes. 